Hi, boys and girls. I miss everybody. I miss welcoming everybody at the door and uh, at the end of the day, reading a story and uh, eating lunch together. But it looks like we're going to be out of school for a little bit longer. Looks like they're trying to get rid of the virus. Today, I'm gonna, we're going to read the second corduroy book. Remember in the first corduroy book, uh, Lisa found corduroy and brought him home and uh, set up his room. In this one, they're going to go to the laundry mat and corduroy is going to want something. And Lisa's going to make it for her. It's called Corduroy in the Pocket. Late one summer afternoon, Lisa and her mother took their laundry to the laundry mat. As always, on such trips, Lisa brought corduroy along, too. The laundry mat was a very busy place at this hour. Now, corduroy, you sit right here and wait for me. Lisa said, I'm going to help my mom with the wash. That reminds me of Curious George. Corduroy waited patiently. Then suddenly his ears popped up. Lisa's mother was saying, Be sure to take out everything out of your pockets, dear. We don't want your precious things to get all wet and soapy. Pockets, Corduroy said to himself. I don't have a pocket. He slid off his chair. I must go find something to make a pocket out of, he said. And he began to look all around the laundry, all around the laundromat. First, he came to a pile of fancy towels and washcloths, but nothing was the right size or the right color. Then he came to a huge stack of colorful clothes in a laundry bag. There ought to be something in here, he said, something good to make a pocket out of. Without hesitating, he climbed into a, a big bag of unwashed laundry. The dampness, when the, the dampness didn't bother Corduroy in the least, though. This must be a cave, he said. I've always wanted to live in a dark cave. When it was time for Lisa to fetch the bear, he was gone. Oh, Mommy, she explained. Corduroy isn't there where I left him. I'm sorry, honey, her mother said. The laundromat's going to be closing soon, and we have to be getting home. Lisa was reluctant to leave without corduroy, but her mother insisted. We'll come back tomorrow, she said. I'm sure he'll still be here. As they left, a young man wearing an artist beret was taking his wet laundry out of his bag, the very bag corduroy had discovered. Before he knew it, Corduroy was being tossed into a, a washer and a dryer with all the other shirts and shorts and slacks. But just as the artist was getting ready to close the door, tumble, Corduroy tumbled out onto the floor. How in thunder did you get mixed up with all my clothes? The artist wondered. Poor Corduroy was damp all over. The least I can do for you is give these overalls a good drying, said the man. He unbuttoned Corduroy's shoulder straps and put his overalls into the dryer. Corduroy grew dizzy as he watched the clothes spinning round and round, but the artist became inspired this would make a wonderful painting, he said, and he took out his sketch pad out of his pocket and began drawing the swirling clothes. I can hardly wait to get back to my studio, he said. Finally, the dryer was stopped, and the man gathered up the clothes. He helped Corduroy put on his warm drive overalls. And all at once, the manager of the laundromat called out, Closing time! Everybody out! Corduroy was gently placed on top of the washing machine. I wonder who that belongs to, the artist said as he was leaving. Seems to me he should have been, he should have some place to go. He's sure a fine fellow, he said. Too bad he's lost. As soon as the lights were turned off, Corduroy began to search again. He was surprised to see something white glowing in the dark. 
Maybe it's snow, he said to himself. I've always wanted to play in the snow. He accidentally tipped over an open-lidded box. Suddenly, he was covered with soft, slippery snowflakes that were soaked. Gradually, Corduroy began to slip and slide. Oh, what fun, he said with a smile. I've always wanted to ski down a big, giant mountainside. He landed head first in, the, in an empty laundry basket. This must be a cage, he said, peeking out through the bars. I've never wanted to be inside a cage like a bear in a zoo. By now, Corduroy felt drowsy, and soon he was fast asleep. The next morning, when the manager came to open up the door to the laundry basket, at laundry mat, there was Lisa waiting. I've left something in there yesterday, she explained. May I look around? Certainly, said the manager. My customers are always leaving things here. Lisa was searching all over the laundry mat, under the chairs, in the back of the washing machines, when she heard the manager call her. Is this what you're looking for, senorita? Here it is. Yes, yes, he's my best friend, shouted Lisa as she came running. She reached out to pick Corduroy out of the basket. So there's, there's where you've been, you little rascal, she said. It's time that I took you home. Lisa thanked the manager and ran out the door and down the street, holding Corduroy tightly in her arms. I thought I told you to wait for me, she said. Why, why, did, you, why did you wander away? I went looking for a pocket, Corduroy said. Oh, Corduroy, why didn't you tell me you wanted a pocket? Asked Lisa, giving him a big hug. That very morning, Lisa sewed a pocket onto Corduroy's overalls. And here's a card I've made with your name on it for you to keep tucked inside your pocket, she, she said. I've always wanted a purple pocket and my name tucked inside, said Corduroy, and he and Lisa rubbed noses. And that's Corduroy in the, in, the, in, the, in the purple pocket. Boys and girls, I hope to see you soon. Hopefully we can, we can be back together reading stories and uh, do, doing some writing and doing some uh, math. We'll talk to you soon.